free real estate leads using tools you already have. Today, we're going to talk about in-person scripts, things like door knocking, open house, and pop buys. Yes, and they're all free. Hey, it's Mike Ferrante with Century 21 Homestar and the 21 Mike team. Uh, we're a residential real estate team, number one right now in the country for Century 21 for teams in number of sales. So we've been shooting for that for a while. Let's see if we can hold out for the rest of the year. I see we have a couple of teammates on the call today. I've been holding off on announcing that because I want to see how long we can hold that position. Uh, but that's where we are right now. So if you want to get a hold of me, it's mike at 21mike.com or go to our website, 21mike.com. And right at the top, there's a button there to click to schedule an appointment. You'll drop an, uh, something right on our calendar for me or someone on the team. If you want to talk about real estate, uh, we do primarily residential, but about 10% of our business is commercial. So uh, whether you're here in Ohio or you have needs outside of the area, please uh, give us a holler and we can connect you with someone within our, our network and help you out. Uh, Tony Geraci usually joins me. He's actually um, uh, coming back from a, a funeral, unfortunately. So he's not going to be here today. So you just get me. Uh, so twice as much of me and uh, half as much of Tony, or I guess zero the amount of Tony. But again, the topic today, the thing about real estate is the very first thing you have to do is have conversations. You have to have opportunities to talk to people in order to, to get more sales. You know, And then once you have the opportunities, you need to convert those to appointments and then, of course, to offers and listings and so forth. But the number one thing that a lot of agents focus on because they feel like they could do more business if they just had more opportunities, it's that lead generation step. And so what I wanted to do today is, you know, in the past two weeks, we talked about phone scripts and text scripts, and then we uh, uh, talked about social media two weeks ago. And this third is actually the in-person scripts, because I know a lot of agents push back and say, Mike, I'm not good on the phone. I don't like the phone. Or they say, you know, I'm not that good on social media. I don't have much of a following. I'm much better in person. So I always say, great, I have something for you too. Now, the reality is, that most agents just won't do it. They will wait for the phone to ring. They'll wait for leads to come to them. Uh, they're more passive about their business. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but for those of you who are saying, how can I do more business? You have to be proactive. You have to generate more conversations. And one way you can do that is in person. So I wanna roll through these pretty quickly because we keep these training sessions to 20 minutes. Of course, you can replay them on our YouTube channel. Just look up Mike Ferrante Cleveland Realtor and you can go back and see past sessions, especially if you missed the last two. Uh, but let's talk about, let's first talk about door knocking and exactly what that is and what you might say if you knock on someone's door. Now, some of you are daunted by this and saying, well, gosh, I'm going to knock on someone's door. No one likes that. You know, it's like that uh, Sebastian guy who does the uh, bit about, you know, back in the day when the doorbell rang, people would run to the door. Oh, someone's here to visit. Nowadays, we, we hide, right? <clears throat> and that's okay. That's, that's okay. We know that just like when we make phone calls, that when we go door to door, there may not be someone to answer or they just may not answer their door, especially if you look like a salesperson. So a couple quick tips for you, especially coming out of COVID, when, you are, when you're knocking on doors, stand back from the door. So ring the bell, knock on the door and stand six to eight feet back, okay? And I guess try not to look like a salesperson, maybe have your gear on, like I've got my Century 21 gear on, have some flyers in your hand uh, if you're doing it for an, an open house and have a smile on your face, you know, look like you're someone who you might want to talk to. Because remember, guys, what does everyone have on their front door now? A camera, right? So they're going to be looking at you possibly before deciding if they want to answer the door. I also believe in bringing something with me because if they don't answer, I want to leave them something stuffed in their doorknob or in the storm door or something so that my visit isn't completely without value. You know, I know leaving a flyer is not going to be something that generates a lot of return calls, but if I'm there anyway, why not? Plus, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Mike, I mail postcards. Isn't that great? Well, this is a substitute for that, you know, and maybe in addition to sending your postcards, as long as you're there, why not leave a flyer or, or whatever your marketing is, whatever your script is for that day. So if I've gotten you out of your door and you're actually in a neighborhood and you're door knocking, now let's talk about what you'll say. All right. So 
one opportunity for door knocking is when you're farming a neighborhood. Now, what uh, f farming a neighborhood is just a neighborhood you want to own. You want to be the agent who is the agent that people think of when they think of a particular neighborhood. Now, I live here in Ethan's Green, and it's a wonderful, wonderful neighborhood. Pretty good turnover rate. If you don't know what that is, that's how often people move. And so you're looking for neighborhoods where the turnover rate is, say, six, seven, eight percent or more. If you're in a neighborhood where people only move uh, five percent of the time, so meaning like uh, if they're not moving 10 years or more between moves, that's not a good neighborhood. You want a neighborhood where people are moving every five years, every seven years, no more than seven years. So you have a pretty good probability of stumbling across someone who's thinking of moving in the next year. Now you're farming a neighborhood that can include things like mailers. So I have a buddy in Atlanta who says you mail, you fail. And I say, yes, I agree. But if you mail and that's all you do, you fail. So I would augment that saying with that, if that's all you do, you will fail. Mailing can be a great part of a bigger plan. So what I would do is possibly mail postcards to an entire neighborhood. It doesn't cost that much. I did a mailer here in Ethan's Green. 800 homes, and I think it was uh, $300 maybe for, for postcards. You could do letters, you could do anything. But one of the great scripts to use is just simply, hi, I'm Mike Ferrante with Century 21. Uh, I, I live in the neighborhood. Did you get my postcard? That's also a great phone script too, by the way, guys. So just asking, did you get my postcard? You're going to get one of two answers, right? Either no, what postcard? And then that opens the door to, oh, well, I sent postcards out to the entire neighborhood, maybe about my open house or about the neighborhood. There were 10 recent sales in the last six months in the, in the neighborhood, and I just want everyone, wanted everyone to know about them. Okay, so these are a couple different scripts you can use. The, did you get my postcard? If they say, yes, I got it, you say, great, what did you think? Or did you see the home values? Are you curious about your home value? So have a plan when you walk up to the door. If it's a general farming script, the following up on a postcard one is great. If you have a handout with you, like I said at the beginning, having that data right there, oh, you didn't get the, the postcard? Well, here's a copy of the data I sent. And guys, when you do this, don't be meek. You have to have the big smile on your face and say, uh, I see Jessica on the call. Uh, maybe introduce yourself. Well, Jessica, I took, the, I took the time to print the data out. Here it is. And if you hand it to them, the human reaction is to reach out and grab it, right? So they're probably gonna they're probably gonna take it from you, and that's a touch for someone in your neighborhood. Okay, if they're not there, you jam it in the door. Uh, some people are gonna say no thanks, not interested, and that's gonna happen. You have to get over that re rejection because the bottom line is why do most people not pick up the phone or not knock on doors? It's because they don't want the re rejection. I'm not here to play psychoanalyst today, but when you think about it. When you think about that fear of rejection, I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? The very, very worst thing that could happen. Think about that for a second. I wonder if you're going to come up with the same thing I am. So this actually happened to me. I was in a neighborhood. We were door knocking prior to an open house. And I'm going to do the open house door knocking script next. Door knocking with another teammate in a neighborhood for an open house. And the police rolled up on us. I think that's the worst thing I can think of, you know, potentially getting a ticket for soliciting in a neighborhood where it's not allowed or I'm supposed to have a permit. Well, technically, I'm not soliciting. I'm delivering information. It's kind of like the do not call list. I'm just delivering information. I'm delivering flyers to, to houses. Now, I didn't argue with the police officer. We were about done anyway. And I explained to him you know, hey, I'm not even really soliciting. We're just having an open house today. And we were inviting the neighbors to the open house. And guess what I did? I handed the guy a flyer and said, you're not looking to make a move, are you? So it was kind of funny. I mean, I made the situation pretty light. I invited the dude to my open house. He kind of chuckled about it. I said, look, I don't want to cause trouble, though. We were just wrapping up anyway. And to me, that's the worst thing I can think of that could possibly happen when you're door knocking. I'm curious, those of you who are live here uh, in the Zoom, if you have something worse that I'm not thinking of, 
drop it in the chat. I, I'd really, really be curious to hear what you think, because as I sit here and think about the worst thing that can happen to you, I think it happened to me. And that was the police coming up on me. The other worst thing is they could say, no, I'm not interested and slam the door in my face, or maybe even have some choice where, you know, hey, no soliciting here, get out of here, don't knock on my door anymore. Okay, move on to the next house. I mean, that's what you guys are afraid of if you're not door knocking. All right, so the first script is just the simple introduction. I live in the neighborhood. Here's some info. Did you get my postcard? These are ideas for very simple scripts. And of course, at the end of the conversation, whatever it is, it's your call to action. So it might be something as simple as here, take the info. If you ever need anything, you know, please think of me. I live in the neighborhood. I live nearby, whatever it is. Or you could even be a little more aggressive than that and say, hey, do you have any plans of making a move this year? Do you know anyone who might be making a move this this year? Another script for farming a neighborhood, especially if you are working buyers and sellers in that neighborhood, especially buyers, is the I have a buyer script. Okay, again, I don't think this violates the solicitation rule because I'm not selling them anything I'm doing the I have a buyer script instead of on the phone, I'm doing it in person. So it could be something as simple as maybe you print out a flyer that says, I have a buyer, William, who's pre-approved for $350,000, $400,000, and is looking to buy a home in this neighborhood. If you or someone you know is thinking of selling, here's how you reach me. And again, I'm going to hand that flyer and I'm going to say, hey, I'm working with William He's a buyer. I promised him I would proactively try to find him a home because we know we have a shortage of inventory. Here's my info. If you or someone you know is looking to sell, I'm trying to find poor William a house. Again, pretty non-confrontational script shows that I'm a good agent prospecting for my client, but also I'm prospecting for listings, right? I'm going to take a deep breath here. Uh, if you have any thoughts on this, go ahead and drop them in the chat for me. Uh, because I'd like to hear uh, if you guys have objections to this or if there's some big thing I'm forgetting about. Because to me, guys, it's kind of like on the phone. What's the worst thing that can happen? They can hang up on you or say, I'm on a do not call list. Well, if you're using the correct scripts that are not sales scripts, they're informational scripts, you're not violating the do not call. Same as you're not violating a no solicitation policy. All right, one more script for you in person. How about the open house script? Guys, if you're not having open houses, first of all, you are missing the boat. We had an open house this weekend here in Cleveland. It's not like we're in LA or Miami or New York City. 20 people rolled through this open house. This was an overpriced, dated house. I'm not going to say addresses or anything, but we had 20 people through this open house. Our agent got at least two, possibly three buyer leads out of it. And two of those people have homes to sell. So if you tell me that open houses don't work, it's because you're doing them wrong. Part of doing a good open house is the door knocking that happens before the open. Now, unless you're out where there's five acre lots and you have to drive that far between houses, don't do that. But in most neighborhoods where you can walk house to house to house, at least do 40 homes around the house, 10 or maybe 20 in each direction on each side of the street. Print out flyers, you're invited to my open house, and the script is as simple as this. I'm inviting you to a party. Hi, I'm Mike Ferrante with Century 21 Homestar. The Joneses down the street are selling their house, and I promised them I would help market their house by inviting the neighbors to the open so that they could see the home, see the updates, and maybe you know someone looking to get in the neighborhood. Here's the invitation. Again, guys, this is so important, handing the invitation to them so they want to open the door and take it. It would be rude not to. If they're not home or they don't take it, ask if you can leave it. And if they say, get off my doorstep, you get off my doorstep. Maybe, maybe they hate the Joneses, okay? Again, worst thing that could possibly happen. But you're inviting them to the open house. That's it. A great idea is make it a private open house. If your open house is one to three, make it a neighbors only, VIP, neighbors and friends only from 12 to one. Come and have mimosas or, or uh, donuts and, and coffee or whatever it is. Make them feel special. Come from 12 to one. VIP open house. Great script. And of course, wrap these scripts up with, oh, by the way, 
I know there's going to be people who are going to miss out on this house and are going to be looking to buy. We have a shortage of inventory. When might you be looking to make a move? Throw that in, guys, because if you're not asking for the business, you're not going to get it. All right. So we covered three great door knocking scripts there. The informational door knock, farming a neighborhood door knock, your open house door knock. Real simple stuff, guys, but just get out there and do it. It's powerful. Face to face is powerful. So what about let's let's shift gears now. I promised you an open house script. So what do you say at your open houses and what do you do at your open houses? I sometimes pop into an open house just to see how agents are running them because I'm curious if they're just doing it because they're supposed to, supposed to, right? And are you or are you using them as true lead generation activities? Because frankly, guys, the open houses are just as much for us as they are for our sellers. First of all, if you're not doing them for your sellers, you're not doing a good job marketing. If all you're doing is putting up a sign and waiting for the phone to ring, then you're just like the, the lowest bar for agents out there. Anyone can do that. Why are they hiring you? It's because you're going to do a better job, right? So William, who I mentioned earlier, is dropping some great ideas. Make it an event, first of all. Drinks, raffles, music, he says. How about an electronic sign-in sheet with a QR or computer? And then, and then we start getting into the script. And William, of course, knows the script. And these are, these are great questions to ask. But number one is, of course, the marketing. We talked about door knocking. But what do you say when you do a great job and people actually walk in the door? The first thing is, if you're not collecting names and contact information, if you're making a very passive attempt at that, again, you're missing the boat. Okay. People, they don't want, they, they don't necessarily want to give their info to a salesperson, right? They walk in your open house and the first thing you're asking them for is, you know, get your contact info. So I love William's idea of breaking the ice. I sometimes will ask the question and it's a dumb question. And I know it is. They walk in the door and I say, hi, are you here for the open house? Well, of course they are. First of all, it's an easy yes question. Some people will bust my chops and say, oh, no, I'm here for the bake sale or I'm here for the the uh, 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 Rothstein bar, mit bar mitzvah. That one's for you, uh, Grant. But, you know, it, it, it's a good icebreaker and it gets people thinking kind of off guard a little bit. Like, well, of course, I'm here for the open house. Why else would I be here? Great. I have a sign in sheet here. I have a tip for you guys. Instead of handing them an electronic uh, something, uh, uh, iPad or something, if I say to you, great, I'm signing everybody in today. Can I get your name, phone number, email address? You write it down. You type it into the pad. I'm telling you right now that if you just leave it on the table and ask people to sign in, some people will walk right by it. Some people will just say, no, thanks. I'm just looking around. No, thanks. I have an agent. Regardless, get everyone to sign in. One great objection handler I have for, hey, I don't want to give my info is, hey, I promised the seller that I would keep track of everyone who came in their home today. During COVID, that was a great excuse to use. Hey, you know, we're all wearing masks be be because of COVID stuff. We're really tracking who comes in and out of the house today, just in case. You've got to get everyone's name and contact info. Okay. Uh, William brings up a good idea. Need to have your contact info in case you win the raffle. That's another good one. I didn't think of that, William. That's freaking awesome. So number one, collect contact info. Number two, ask the right questions. Now, as agents, it's our duty to make sure that we're greeting people appropriately if they're represented by an agent. However, I don't lead with, do you have an agent? Because in people's minds, they think, oh, if I say yes, and I do know my cousin's uncle's brother's sister's aunt is an agent, if I just say, yes, 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 I have an agent, they'll leave me alone. That's human nature. So I don't lead with that. Instead, I ask questions like William was talking about, hey, how long you been looking? Have you seen any other houses you liked? What methods are you using to look? Now, if they have an agent, that's going to come out. Oh, my agent sh showed me three houses. I, I look at Zillow. My agent shows me houses. Great. Have you written any offers yet? You're going to uncover if they have an agent and it's our duty. And if they do have an agent, find out if they have a written agreement. You know, you definitely need to honor these agreements, a buyer's agreement if they have one. But frankly, if they're coming into open houses, their agent may or may not be doing a great job for them. 
So you are there to sell the house, number one, and number two, to create new clients, right? So it doesn't hurt to ask these questions and collect the contact information. I'm not advocating for going out and stealing people's clients. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that not everyone who says they have an agent and comes into your open house truly has an agent they're working with. Or sometimes, let me tell you a story. Sometimes they don't even know their agent's name. I was at an open house. I did this exact script. I said, they said, oh, we, we're working with our agent. I said, great. Let me have your name. What's your agent's name? Because I want to jot it down. I want to let that agent know their folks came into my open. They didn't even know the name. How, how tight do you think they really are working with that agent? So just food for thought, guys. Then once they're in there, find out the, the home run question. Do they have a home to sell? Because not all, they don't think of all agents as great listing agents. You might have another opportunity to talk to someone about a listing. Okay. All right. So I'm going to shift gears off the open house. You guys got the gist of the questions. Tom Ferry has a great script for open houses, asking questions, getting them talking. Okay. The last real quick script I want to do is the pop by script. We covered this a little bit in working your sphere uh, with uh, the phone calls and texts. Guys, the pop by scripts are really important. They need to be short. You know, if you're doing a lot of pop buys, you could burn a whole day with three pop buys if you end up spending two and a half hours at people's houses. But remember, have some kind of little gift or something of value to give people. Whether you're doing the CMA a day script, where you're trying each day to hand out one market analysis for someone in your sphere. Hey, great seeing you. Here's the thing of value I'm going to give you, whether it's a little ice cream scoop with engraved with your info that says, hey, if you need the scoop, scoop on real estate, you know, here's my info or it's a, or spring flowers or your holiday gifts, whatever it is. And of course, make sure you shift to always asking for referrals. All right, I'm going to take a breath here. When you ask for referrals, it can be as simple as, hey, do you know anyone buying or selling? I like a more specific ask though. Hey, Mike, do you know one person who might be thinking of making a move this year? I, I, I like asking for one person because wouldn't that be a win? And then the last one is ask even a more specific question. Sometimes we say, you know, in my BNI networking group that the more specific the ask, the better it is. For example, hey, do you know anyone who has outgrown their home? Do you know anyone with a ranch home that they're thinking of selling? Because how rare are ranches, right? Do you guys have any buyers? If you're listening to this, do you have a buyer in your database who only wants a ranch because they're downsizing? So why not ask for something specific? It gets people's wheels turning. Instead of just saying, hey, do you know anyone buying or selling? The normal reaction is, nah, I really don't. But if I said to you, hey, hey Kathy, do you know anyone who's thinking of selling a ranch home this year, I have buyers waiting for ranches. Now they think about it. And that's the value in asking a specific question. All right, guys. So I'm already over time, even though Tony wasn't here. Uh, gave you three great ideas, door knocking, your open house scripts, and of course your pop by scripts. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Will, thanks for all the uh, additional stuff here. Your, your raffle idea, the little $10 Duncan card. I love that. I freaking love that. I'm going to start using that uh, in my classes. So thank you so much for your input. If you guys have other ideas, other scripts you use, please drop them in the comments below. You can also email me, mike at 21mike.com and let me know what you want to hear us talk about. Tony will be back next week, I assume. And go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you don't want to miss our future content. All right, everybody, I'll hang around for a minute afterwards if you have any comments or questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. We'll start off a new series of topics here uh, for realtors. Take care. What's the YouTube?